Alright everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So in a previous video I extracted potassium from bananas. If you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend going and watching it. I'll post a link somewhere for you to find. Now, for those of you who have seen it, or are not too worried about spoilers, I found that the bananas had less potassium than the USDA said they should, by about half. And the peels had much more potassium than the actual flesh of the banana that you eat. Now, that's kind of been bothering me, so I thought I'd do a little experiment here to kind of figure something out. So, I got some bananas, which you can probably see are quite green. I got them the greenest bananas that I could find. And I'm wondering if, as the bananas ripen, maybe the potassium in the peel migrates into the flesh. Maybe if you measure the potassium at a different stage of ripeness, you'll get different answers. So, I'm going to take these bananas, separate them into two groups that are equal as I can possibly make, and uh, one of them we're going to peel now. Uh, take the peels, dry them out, extract the potassium from them. And the other group we're going to let ripen for about two weeks and then peel those and then see how much potassium is in those peels. So if the potassium migrates from the peel into the banana, then the peels that stay on the fruit for the two weeks should contain much less. At least that's the idea. Let's uh, get to it. You guys have already seen me process bananas to extract the potassium, so I won't show too much of this. I might do a kind of a little video montage here and we'll get to the results fairly quickly. At least you guys will.
All right, results time. So the bananas that were peeled were they're still green. I was able to extract 25.51 grams of potassium perchlorate. And the ones that were peeled after they're ripened, 14.08. Now this is potassium perchlorate. This isn't pure potassium, but they're both potassium perchlorate. So the ratio should be the same. And that ratio is about half. That is significant. Uh, you know, of course I've lost like little bits of potassium here and there, but that is, that is a significant number. That tells me that there is definitely a difference, unless I've made some terrible error. The potassium is missing from the ripened peels. Now, the potassium didn't evaporate, at least I hope it didn't, but it's a... Uh, oxides are fairly stable so they have really high boiling points so burning the uh, peels to ash i probably didn't lose much uh, the potassium is radioactive but i'm not doing this in billions of years the amount of potassium that's lost is completely negligible through radioactivity as far as I can guess is that the only way that the potassium would be missing is for it to have moved into the fruit, which is kind of what I was suspecting. Because the, the peels, they, they get thinner, they, they lose mass, and the potassium is highly soluble, so it would move with the water. My guess is the, the fruit is like absorbing nutrients and moisture from the peels as they ripen. But yeah, from this result, with an end value of essentially 1, it appears that if you want potassium, you should wait for the fruit to fully ripen. And also, perhaps the USDA, when they were measuring the potassium values, they just used fully ripened fruit. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.